singer, every as dancer, usual, every movie and TV would be would it, would, if these would, people would got area, what do you want to call it, uh, no what it called, a mill or something? Nothing, nothing for us to sing, watch, Wood mill. There's the, there's an area the where they stay, so we'll be they, uh, to keep it. On the upside, there'd be no karaoke. Now, to be fair to my father, he did hug me once on my 21st birthday. It was very awkward, and I think I know what it was that made me feel so uncomfortable. The nude. Whoa, folks! Little jokey poo there. Okay, he does it. Come on, come on back. Come on. Once in a while, I just I just throw it in there to see if you're paying attention. To be honest, my father is probably the person I got my sense of humor from. I'm not saying I got his sense of humor. I'm saying I got a sense of humor. Ah. His sense of humor, I don't think anybody really has. I can't quite describe it. He's got a very bizarre, dry way of trying to be funny. Very hey. slow, droll manner of speaking, so it's hard to detect that he's joking at all. Very subtle. And it's dangerous Whoa. because if you don't Look know at this. Look at funny, the fog. That's thick. In the wrong way. It's almost like it reminds me of London. <laughs> this day, my wife is taking him the wrong way. I'm, I'm kind of stuck in the middle. I can't tell you how many times I've tried to calm my wife down with the same please. He's joking. He's making a joke. Well, I'm sorry. I don't see how it's funny when he says he thinks one of our two-year-old twins has homosexual tendencies. True story, folks. Now, the fact that I say true story here doesn't mean that everything else you've heard isn't true. It's all true, but I'm just afraid some of the things my father does, you're going to think I made up. I didn't. Told me. <laughs> I've tried to explain my father's sense of humor to my wife countless times, but she just doesn't get him. And the dangerous thing is, I find him funny. I'm not condoning his action. Look, he's a, he's a pain in the ass to me too, but even though he drives my wife crazy, I have to laugh sometimes. Quietly. To myself. Of course, his comic masterpiece, or as we refer to it, the answering machine incident, almost broke up our marriage. Okay, don't get me wrong, the answering machine incident was not without comedic merit. The timing was bad, though. My wife was still alive. Here's how it went. My dad figured out, I don't know how and I don't know why, but he figured out how to call into our answering machine and retrieve our messages. He cracked our answering machine code. He, he would listen to our messages, then call back and leave us a message advising us what to do about the other messages. He'd be like, all right, the guy from the gas station called. Your car is going to be ready tomorrow. What'd you do to it? I told you to check the oil, you dummy. And why did Anna's gyno call? Huh? Is she pregnant again? Of course, when my wife heard that, what the hell is he doing? That's like reading our mail, Ray. Don't tell me you think this is funny. I, I thought it was kind of funny. I talked it down and she got over it and life returned to normal. Until the next day, when my father figured out how to change our outgoing message. My wife and I were at a friend's house. We called our machine. Instead of hearing my voice on the outgoing message, we heard my father's. Uh, hi, you've reached Ray and Anna. If you want them, leave a message at the beep. If you want me, Al Romano, I'm at 555-2006. Now, I want to thank my father because... Is this, is this him, Naples right here? I've had the pleasure of mm -hmm. hearing my wife. Okay, we're heading to Naples, house. folks. I don't want to paint the there is a way little you can see of it. His pranks may is, sound is, is, uh, but let me tell you Lake. Sebago Lake. And probably we will see a lot clearer on, on, on the way over here. Was, this is the say, this is a shopping was. area. Back then all I remember is called, being a called guy the Naples a Shopping bit Center. Certain things was where we always go by when, when we go to Friday. place I never wanted to be with my father was in the car while he was driving, stuck in traffic. I know no one likes traffic and we're all frustrated when we're in it, but my dad had a particularly low tolerance for people when he was on the road. Everyone around us became a hump. Well, look at this hump trying to squeeze it saying, on me. I see Casco or something, Casco Bay or whatever that is. This is Naples. And of course, it's my mother Sebago really tried to contain me. Sebago Lake. Lake. Albert, okay. please, you're scaring the children. Just calm down and let the fire truck go by. Fire my ass. 
It's lunchtime. It's the Bago Lake, it's, folks. Oh, uh, yeah, there's always a fire at lunchtime. Yeah, go ahead, you hub. One time when I was older, I made the mistake of actually saying something. Spoonga River Queen, right there. Dad, you're right on this guy's bumper. Pull back a little. Ah, look at Mr. Know-it-all, Mr. College boy, Mr. Philosophy major. Hey, why don't you go back to school and waste another $20,000 of my life with that tree falls in the forest bull crap? Huh? I hump, therefore I am. Okay, well, how about this? I hump, therefore you am. How's that sound, Socrates? Okay, Dad, relax. Wherever we had to be, we were usually late because my father was always implementing some plan or theory to avoid traffic. Going in to go through? Yeah. Hey, if we leave now, it'll be rush hour. It's going to take us an hour to get there. But if we leave in a half hour, there'll be no traffic, and it'll only take us 15 minutes to get there. We'll actually pass ourselves had we left right now. My father was the disciplinarian of the house. He didn't go overboard, but he was from the old school, and if we did something wrong, he wasn't above a little smack on the butt. Mm -hmm. I remember once, I was about nine, I was riding bikes with my brother Richard, and I almost got hit by a car. I wasn't looking, but luckily the car stopped short, and the only thing that got scratched, really, was my bike. On our way home, Richard said he was going to tell my father what happened unless I gave him a dime. Now, like I said, Dad was the disciplined guy, so this kind of give-me-a-dime blackmail went on all the time between me and my brothers. He didn't want Dad to find out if he screwed up in any way. I didn't want to give him a dime. I told him, I'll give you a nickel. He said, no, a dime. No, no way. What did I do wrong? I'll give you a nickel. Sorry, dime or nothing. They're nothing, idiot. Dickhead, pimple face. Okay, you get the picture. We call each other names for the whole ride home, and needless to say, we never struck a deal. When we got in the house, my brother told my dad, and guess what happened? Let's just say that would have been a dime well spent. Now, on its face, there seems to be no logic getting a spanking for almost being hit by a car. What was my dad thinking? Thank God you're not hurt, so I can hurt you. But now that I'm a parent, I understand where that comes from. When your kids do something careless that puts them in danger, it scares you so much, you want to teach them a lesson so they'll never do it again. The weird part is, if 